In this video, we're going to talk about powers and roots of fractions. If you were given two-thirds, a fraction, to the second power, well, this power means to multiply the two-thirds by itself two times. 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, and that's the answer. Well, just ignore that for a moment. Make believe it's not there. So, you have 2 times 2, which is 2 squared, and 3 times 3 is 3 squared. And yes, that's 4 over 9. The point I'm trying to make is you square the 2 and the 3. That is, you can go right to this. In fact, you can even ask yourself two questions. What's two squared? And what's three squared? And be done. If you had five over four and you want to square it, now whether you write this down or not, you have to think five squared over 4 squared. That's 5 squared and that's 4 squared. You want to go from here right to there? That's okay, but there's only one way you're going to get it right and that's if you ask yourself what 5 squared is and if you ask yourself what 4 squared is. So whether you write this or not, you have to think it. If you were asked how much is 3 over 7 squared, that's 3 squared over 7 squared. Just for the record, if you were given 3 squared over 7, 3 squared is 9, 7 is 7. This here means the numerator of 3 times 3 in the bottom is 7. The square this square has nothing to do with the 7. In fact, we can have 3 squared over 7 cubed. 3 squared is 9. 7 squared is 49 times another 7. I guess that's 343. A bit of notation when it comes to roots. If there's no number there, as in the square root of 25, that number is understood to be 2. This asks a simple question. Just remember the answer can't be negative. What times itself two times equals 25? Well, if you don't know, get your hands dirty. One times one, well, that's not enough. Two times two is four, that's not enough. Ooh, three times three is getting closer. Let's try four times four, no. Oh, five times five is 24, 25. One number times itself two times gives you 25, 5. If I multiply 5 by itself 2 times, I get 25. What if I, what if you were asked to find the fourth root of 81? What times itself 4 times gives you 81? Well, you, you should know if you multiply 1 by itself, you just get 1. Now these numbers grow quickly, so let's try two. I would do four times four is 16. Three times three times three times three. Now fair enough, three times three is nine. And let's assume we know up to the 12 table. So three times three is nine, times three is 27. And then you're not gonna know what 27 times three is, maybe. 
if you only know up to use 12 table. Why not say 9 times 9? Ooh, look at this. If I multiply 3 by itself 4 times, I get 81. This is not 81, excuse me. This is equal to or 3. Another way of doing it is to break down 81 into prime factors. It's 9 times 9, 3 times 3, 3 times 3. So 81 is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And the fourth root of 81 is a special number that when you multiply it by itself four times, gives you 81. Well, look at this. Three seems to be that special number that when I multiply it by itself four times, gives me 81. Suppose you have the fifth root of 32. Well, let's try two. I know one times one, five times will be one. You have four times four, that's 16, times two. Oh, look at that. That's 32. So what do I multiply by itself five times to get 32? Two. Another way of doing it is to do it in reverse order. Here, we kept multiplying. Here, we're really factoring or unmultiplying. 32 is 2 times 16, or 8 times 4, however you like it. 2 is prime. 16 is 8 times 2, or 4 times 4. And 8, well, you know what? I know 8. It's 2 times 2 times 2. If you insist, we can say it's 4 times 2, but then I get the other two twos. So let's see. 32 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 5 times. Well, the fifth root of 32 is asking for a special number. Can't be negative that when I multiply it by itself five times gives us 32. And two's the answer. Here it is. One, two, three, four, five. I'm multiplying. And look at that. I'm getting 32. Suppose you were asked to compute the square root of 9 over 16 plus 3 over 2 squared. Well, I know the square root of 9, and I know the square root of 4. So that's the square root of 9 over 16, 3 quarters, plus 3 plus this. 3 squared is 9. 3 times 3 is 9. 2 times 2 is 4. We're adding. The denominators are the same. Keep it. Add the numerators. 3 plus 9 is 12. 12 divided by 4 is 3. I know that because 3, sorry, 4 times 3 does equal 12. So if somebody asks you what this equals, you would be correct in saying it equals 3. Suppose you were asked to find the square root of 9 over 144 plus one and a half squared. Well, I know the square root of nine, and I know the square root of 144, it's 12, plus, now, I don't know how to square that the way it is. You have to write it as a fraction, an improper fraction, it turns out to be. Two times one is two, plus 1 is 3, and we keep the denominator, which was 2. And that needs to be squared. So we have 3 over 12 plus 3 squared over 2 squared. Now, 
I can divide both of these numbers by 3. And the nice thing is that I get a 4 in the bottom and whatever on top. It turned out to be 1. In addition, the denominators are the same. We're in addition. Keep the not denominator. Add the numerators. 1 plus 9 is 10. Divide by 2. 2 goes into each of these numbers. 5 and 2 times. Now, we were pretty lucky that we knew the square root of the top and the bottom, so we were quickly able to get to 3 over 12. But what if you're given the square root of 75 over 3? Uh, I don't know what the square root of 75 is, and I don't know what the square root of 3 is. So, you know what, maybe I should do the, oops, maybe I should do the division first. 3 into 75. You should know this. 3 quarters or 75. Goes in 2 times with 1 left over. Bring down the 5. Goes in evenly. That is no remainder. So, this is just the square root of 25. Now 25 is 5 times 5. What times itself 2 times gives us 25? 5. Okay. Let's talk about a rule. No fractions here. The square root of a times b is the square root of a times the square root of b. If a and b are not both positive, sorry, negative. One can be negative but not the other. Or not both negative. Okay. So if I ask you, what is the square root of 20 t times the square root of 5? Well, I don't know the square root of 20, and I don't know the square root of 5. Why don't I know the square root of 20? Because 20 is 5 times 4, 2 times 2. N there's no one number that when I multiply it by itself, is not an integer that when I multiply it by itself gives me 20. Same with 5. 5 is prime. This, you know, 1 times 1 is not 5. 2 times 2 is not 5, but it's 4. 2 times 2 is 4. And 3 times 3 is not 5. In fact, it's bigger than 5. So we can't go any further. But what we can do is say, this is the square root of 20 times 5. See, we were given the problem in this form. The square root of one number times the square root of another number. And I wrote it in this form, the square root of the product. So we went this way. Sometimes you want to go that way. Now, 20 times 5 is 100. And I go, oh yeah, 10 times 10 is 100. So the square root of 20 times the square root of 5 is 10. Now, if you have the square root of 16 times 9, I'd break this up. I would go from this form over here to this form. Why? Because I know the square root of 16, and I know the square root of 9. And I multiply them. That's the square root of 16. 4 times 4 is 16. And the square root of 9 is 3. So that gives me 12. So sometimes it's better to separate them. 
Sometimes it's better to separate and other times it's better to put them together. You get to decide. I mean, the, the reason I did it the way I did is, is I didn't know what the square root of 20 is and I didn't know what the square root of 5 was. So I put it together and I got the square root of 100, which I knew. Excellent. Now, you could have done 16 times 9, 54, 14. So this would have given you the square root of 144, which I knew, which I know. Now, this involved making the numbers bigger. I made the numbers smaller. Instead of the square root of 144, I took the square root of 6 and 9, 4 and 3. Fine. At the end, I had to multiply 4 and 3. Here, I didn't have to multiply anything. I just knew the square root of 144. you have the square root of 81 over 9, you can do the division and get 9 and say that's 3. Or you can take the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom and you get 9 over 3, which is also 3. Now, need to talk about something. I see so many students say the following and then write something else. They'll say the square root of 25 is 5. I'll hear them say it. The square root of 25 is or equals 5. Yet they write that. That is not 5. You all know that's 5. I asked 100 students to write down the number 5 all hundred students would write down the number five. Not one of them would write down the square root of five. It's suicidal in my opinion, actually in anyone's opinion. If you think that the square root of 36 is nine, if you think, you know, I don't like nine, say seven. If you think that the square root of, of 36 is seven, That'll be wrong, fair enough. But what are the odds that it'll be the square root of seven? If you think it's seven, please write down the square root of 36 equals seven. Because that one is not going to be right. What are the odds that you think the answer is seven, but the answer turns out to be the square root of seven? Fair enough. The, the square root of 36 is 6. But whatever you do, if you think the square root of 36 is 6, don't write that number because that's not 6. If you think that 7 plus 2 is 9, don't write down 11. Even if you were wrong and you thought that 7 plus 2 was 10 and you pick a different number, Okay, you, you'll be wrong and you were wrong when you thought it was 10. But what are the chances that if you put a different number than what you think it is, that you'll be right? I mean, there are so many numbers out there. To make a mistake and say 9, that's unlikely. If you think the square root of 49 is 7, whatever you do, don't write down the square root of 7. And what really puzzles me is somebody will say that the square root of four, 16 is 4. They would actually say that and then put the square root. And then they'd stop. Why not say the square root of 4 is 2 and then put the square root if that's your style? Okay, this is suicidal. If you, let me get rid of that. If you think the square root of 16 equals 4, then give it your best shot and say it equals 4. Whatever you do, if you think the square root of 16 equals 4, don't write the
the square root of negative 4. That's suicidal. I mean, once in a while, here you would have been right. Okay, once in a while you would have been right. But it's highly unlikely if I ask you what the square root of 81 is. You think it's some number, whatever that number is. But, but then you put down a different number. And this number turns out to be right. If you think this is 11, please put down 11. Do not put down the square root of 11. And it turns out it's wrong. But that one's not going to magically be right. The square root of 81 is 9. And you all know how to write down 9. And it's not that way. Now, I'd have less trouble if students said the square root of 81 is the square root of 9. Okay? At least they wrote down what they thought the answer was. And then, you know, I talked to them about why that's wrong. But it's just mind-boggling to me that one would think the square root of 81 equals 9. And then the student writes down the square root of 9. Okay, that's not true. Okay. You know, 80, the square root of 81 equals the square root of 81. And the square root of 17 is equal to the square root of 17. And the square root of 25 is equal to the square root of 25. The square root of 25 does not equal the square root of 5. We have this simple rule. If the square root of a equals the square root of b, then a equals b. I know this like I know my name. Hopefully then you won't say this. Because if the square root of this equals the square root of that, then this and that have to be equal. <laughs> 25 doesn't equal 5. Okay, they're not equal. This completes the video on powers and roots of fractions.